So guys, welcome to my third video. I got this um, Asa Ruko 2 from my father the other day. He borrowed it to me. It's a pretty solid uh, steel lock. I don't have the the, the near skills to to pick this one open, but uh, it's uh, rekeyable, so I can pin this to you know the all the different pin setups and the difficulty levels that I am that I want. So I thought that we uh, we shall take this apart together. It's a seven pin uh, ASA key with a, a force lock uh, setup, so you have to lock it with the key. And to take it apart, you need to open, remove the key. And you have this little screw in there. It's a posi drive screw, but I think my Phillips driver will just do just fine I'm removing this this screw. Push the core out with the, the driver, and I noticed that I need uh, some makeshift pin holder so I got this old iPhone silicone case here and you notice this core the the springs are on top here so uh, you have to take out one spring at a time here be careful not to shoot them away they could pop right open and get lost if you do this too quickly oh and there we have the lock housing on its own we have a nice little clip under here it holds the the core in place so to take this out we just need to hold our pins upside down here and we we can take out the core like so stay good luck and now we have all these pins so start with oh get them all out the other way around because I don't have a driver yeah, this is going to be fun, setting this back together. So, we have these nice serrated mushroom drivers. And there are four of them. And then there's three standard. Wow. For my... <laughs> Next attempt at this, I think I'm gonna want a makeshift driver of follower of some kind. No, that won't do it either. Let's see if we have a go out of, out of screen here. Sorry about that. Let's see if a Duracell will no, it's just too big so yeah we have to key this the way we want later on so as you can see this is a snowman shaped core block housing solid steel and these are the, the key pins See if we can take this out one by one. So we have some spools, 
spool type. Standard. Yeah, so there are two normal standard pins. Let's see if we can zoom in on those. Remove our tray here. So you see that's the key pins. And you have the, the driver pins here. So they line up like this in the lock. So you have... You have a, a big trap here for oversetting. This part, this uh, mushroom shaped part here of this spool thing. Well, um, that's well, th this is your deep set. And uh, when you overset these pins, it will also it will feel like you have, have a nice deep fold set, but you might have overset this. So, this, this can be tricky to, to pick. But now I know what I, I'm dealing with in this lock. We also have the core here. This anti-drilling inserts here. Two here. And uh, actually, those carbide tips, they can take them out in this lock. At least one of them. Yeah, second one also falls out. So, the anti-drill inserts are also loose in this lock. So, we shall try to put this baby back together then. So I can use this lock. I will try to give you a wider picture so you can see when I'm mounting it. You Driver pin, move away. At least this one I got in the right order. The key pins. Most critical part. Yeah, so the key pins are in and we can, can verify with the key that they all line up perfectly. So, so the lock is usable again with this key. That's pretty important, don't you think? In with this core, the clip, we can take that later on. Now we mount these guys back. standard guys on the back. I don't see any orientation difference in these ones so or is it? I'll try to show you there is whoops there's a small a small groove here or crater or something. Maybe it's to connect with with the key pin so we make sure we put that one that side down into the lock. Otherwise it may cause some interference or something. 
and it should be remounted the same way it was before I took it apart. So these are all different lengths, so you will have individual feedback of each pin as well, since the springs are the same, but the drivers are in different. That's good, don't you think? And then we have the, the clip. And then and now the tricky part. We also have to get the core back in the lock house. So now each spring And since there's nothing holding these springs down, I, I need to, to push them down with my finger and push the core into the housing without damaging the spring, which is notoriously tricky. I think, do I have something? No. Can, maybe I can just push it with the top of my... Here, so. Yeah, that's one. Whoop! <laughs> that really flew high. So you see, <laughs> it's very tricky to assemble this this type of, of core where it, the springs are not held in place from the from the other side of the housing when you use a driver to, to take the core out, so... Yeah. Oh. These springs are pretty springy, I tell you that. Can you imagine doing this in the factory where they make the locks? Do you think they have special tools for this? Or do they go like me to make shift tools at home? What do you think? Bing! Second spring escape. Yeah, core in place. Now it's just a matter of screwing it back together with the, the driver here. Yeah, not too tight because I see this screw is a bit worn out so I don't want to over tight it because it might be difficult to take it apart next time. So, the lock, yeah, fully working again. Great, huh? So, that's the, the gutting and reassembly of an old Asaruka with the green color code here. Beautiful lock, really, really hard. I don't think I need to prove that this is hardened with my regular file or anything, but yeah. Tough lock, tough, really tough lock with the seven pin core and uh, yeah, I will pin this up with uh, with some different uh, different pins so I can I can train on uh, different scenarios with this lock. Really lovely. Thank you, Dad, and thank you all for watching. <laughs>